Have you always wanted to know what athletes really think of drugs, cheats and how it affects them personally? And even what happens to them when they retire? I continue my chat with 400 meter Olympian Jamie Bolsh in this part two. Well, you mentioned your um, athletics and your medals. Have you brought them so that we can see now? Yeah, I've got, I've got, well, I've only brought one because I thought this was the important one, which everyone loves. So this is my um, Olympic silver medal, which I got in um, Atlanta in 1996 um, in the relay with Roger Black, Mark Richardson and Ewan Thomas. Um, and, and that, that was a great moment, you know, to to train all your life and end up sort of like getting one of these. I mean, it's, you know, it's amazing. Like, it's funny because the older I've got, Michelle, um, what I've found is um, the older I've got, the more less important people think of me and all they want to see is the medal. Do you know what I mean? Like at the time when I was younger and I got the Olympic medal, I was like, oh, Jamie, Jamie. Now they're like, move, step aside, Jamie. I want to see this. Do you know what I mean? And I get that, you know? So the older I get, when I get to about 50s and 60s, people don't care about me. They just want to hold an Olympic medal. So very proud about that. But also, there's one that's missing because you actually got a gold, didn't you, from um, the 97, 97 Evan, yeah. champs, right? Yeah. So, again, so this was in 96. In 97, we I was in the relay again and the American team beat us. Um, it was a guy called Antonio Pettigrew who was taking drugs that day, but he didn't get caught until 13 years later. Wow. And uh, we got upgraded 13 years later to the gold. And... Um, Myself and you and Thomas, being both from Wales, we got a, like a little presentation in the Senate in Cardiff. Television there, great. Roger Black and Mark Richardson got their medals sent to them in the post. Wow. They had a World Championship gold medal sent to them in the post. A disgrace, really. So, you know, it's a, a sad moment, really. I'm, I'm proud to be a, a World Gold Medalist, but it would have been nice to have done it at the time, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, a lot of people obviously think our athletes on drugs. Um, when you think, you know, you saying and all the talent that he's got, people will still question it because of all these other people yeah. who yeah. made the sport really bad. I mean, from your point of view, though, does it take away what you've achieved? Even though you've got the gold medal, do you kind of still think yeah. it should it's silver in your mind because that's what you got uh, on Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, I miss the moment. Uh, I miss the rostrum. You know, that's what it's all about, being on the rostrum, listening to the British National Anthem. Um, I only ever had that once in my career, which is, you know, great in, its, in itself on a world stage, which is World Indoors I won. And it's lovely when you hear the anthem and, and the moment, you know, you miss the moment. That's not without the opportunity of the sponsorship. I mean, if we had won the gold medal back then, you know, we'd have been serious household names. Um, so it's lots of things which are very sad. So yeah, I'm still, a, you know, yes, I'm a gold medalist, but it was done under false pretenses. So, you know, it's a bit of a shame, but that's life. You know, I can go to bed at night and know that I, in the whole of my career, did it properly and honestly. And, you know, people who have cheated in their life, they've got to go to bed looking over their shoulder thinking, oh, I've been a cheat. And I, I couldn't live with that. I've been raised by my mum and dad who are lovely people and you know they've taught me the the right way in life and that's work hard train your best and and whatever you get is what you get you know and and I can look back and think I did it properly and honestly and I'm proud of it you know brilliant and so tell us about what you're up to now then so so I've I, I'm I um I'm involved in a lot of stuff you know um I've always been quite entrepreneurial I, I'm, I'm I don't fit in that regular box for, of nine till five um so i've got a couple of companies my my my, my major thing i'm doing is um it's called bid aid and so we do silent auctions and charity auctions around the uk and we're starting to go across the world which is exciting especially with covid we're doing all online auctions so i'm the person who comes along with frame memorabilia experiences holidays artwork and sell them on you know to to people who want to bid in a charity auction mm -hmm. and then we just we just released another version of that something slightly different called you win which is really exciting which is done on a donation basis and i'm involved in herbalife um, which is a, a sports brand of nutrition and so yeah i'm involved in lots i do a bit of tv radio my life doesn't stop you know it, there is no nine to five in 
my book. I don't know what that is. Um, I woke up this morning at quarter past five, half five, and I'm out walking at quarter to six in the morning, you know, just to make sure I get my training in. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's full on, but I enjoy it. It's what I enjoy doing. So there's definitely life after sport then for all those Yeah, people. yeah. It, in fact, I've, I miss the great moments of, you know, meeting like people like yourself, Michelle, you know, we used to have a really good laugh on the track and, you know, have some good fun or whatever. So I miss all the camaraderie with my, my athletics friends. But to be honest, my lifestyle now is just as good in a different way. You know, I'm not going to be on TV in front of a million, a billion people at the Olympic final. But, you know, what I do now is very rewarding. You know, I, I'm helping a lot of other people in the process. So. Yeah, I, I can't complain. I'm not one of these people who's retired and, oh, I wish I could do this and I wish, I wish. No, I've, I've, I've done my time on the track now. It's time to do some business and I love it. Enough of the chat. I give Jamie Bolsh a style challenge, but it's up in part three. So you're going to have to click the subscribe button so you know when the next reminder's up. And send me a comment. Let me know what you think about this series. Until then, take care.